Hi, welcome to this edition of On Tap, presented by FCSI of the Americas. I'm Wade Kaler, Executive Director. On Tap this week, we welcome one of the most fun FCSI members to be around. He's one of the most networked individuals you'll ever meet, and you can be sure when this man's in the room, he'll make the rounds and make everybody feel welcome. He's a multiple award-winning food service consultant and the co-creator of the infamous fruit ball game we discussed with Ken Schwartz last season. Please welcome the president of JME Hospitality, Mr. John Egnor. Hi, John. Welcome to the show. Hey, Wade. Great to be here. Absolutely. Thank you, Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, I've, I, since I saw your name get on the call sheet, I thought this will be a lot of fun. Um, I've never been around <laughs> you where you're not in a great mood and a lot of fun to be around, as I said, and, and probably one of the most fun FCSI members I know. Um, so I was really looking forward to this. Um, as you know, with on tap series, though, we, we've kind of start off with the basic question of, you know, where did you get your start? I mean, tell me a little bit about your background, how you got into hospitality and became a food service consultant. Well, it's, I started uh, in hospitality when I was a young, young person. My father, uh, well, I had 10 brothers and sisters, so, uh, wow. and we're all basically uh, less than a year apart. So uh, growing up, my father always wanted to have his own restaurant or hotel. So in the summers in Atlantic City, which was a, you know, a seasonal um, community, uh, he would lease a hotel or lease a restaurant and we would all work it. Um, really? So from an early age, um, I worked the front desk. I made beds, uh, short order cooked, I've dishwashed, I've done all the jobs in hospitality from uh, a back of house side. Um, and, uh, you know, from there, I just went into, you know, school, finished education, graduated LaSalle and went into construction. Okay. Um, and then from construction, it kind of led into, hey, the chef wants to do this, can you do it? And I said, sure, we can you know, I spoke the language. I knew how to weld. I could, you know, take things apart, put them back together. Um, and I understood operations. And I learned at an early age, the best way to learn was to watch the persons doing the job that you wanted to do yourself or emulate sure. that. So kind of all fell into place. Yeah. And so how did you get into be a food service consultant on your own then? Like what made you decide to so get I into was, it for yourself? I was, uh, I was doing design build for a company. I was a sheet metal um, project manager and we were doing a big kitchen job um, install. And uh, just one thing led to another and, and the owner of the company was an old friend of mine. Uh, we talked about uh, sort of starting our own kitchen business. And uh, so I started doing just installations and then one thing led to another and I started doing design build um, and did that for about four years. And one of the architects I was working with on a project in Atlantic City, and I did mostly all gaming in the beginning. I did okay. 15 years of nothing but gaming work all over the world. And um, But prior to that, uh, they said, hey, we have this project. Um, we want you to be the designer on it. And I said, well, yeah, we can go to the design build thing. No, no. They said, no, no, no. We don't want you to, to build it. We just want you to design it. And I said, what do you mean? That's a job? I can just design? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to worry about who's yeah. paying for it or am I getting paid or all that stuff. I can go from the bottom of the food chain to the top <laughs> of the food chain. And uh, they said, yeah. And I said, okay. So I went and met the, the gentleman who was the, going to be the GM of the property and the guy who was financing and putting the team together. And uh, it was a small project in uh, Connecticut called Foxwoods. Oh. Um, so that was my first project, Foxwoods, which became the largest casino in the world yeah. uh, at one time. Um, and I did 18 years worth of work there in five casinos and over 100 restaurants. Wow. Um, so it was a pretty good start. That's a very good start. Absolutely. So uh, obviously gaming was a big part of it. Is there what with JME, what are your specialties or what segments do you focus in on more than others? Maybe like maybe the top three. Uh, well, we've we, we've worked in all the segments, um, but I think that over the years um, we've kind of moved, and and we've moved, and we've changed the name of the company from, you know, it was Gem Associates for years. I changed yeah. it to JME Hospitality uh, about five years ago. I wanted it to be more hospitality driven, sure. um, and I looked at food service as being really hospitality, not just food service. Yeah. Uh, so we started moving into healthcare and. Brand Bringing room service as part of hospitality into the into the world of real room service in, ho in ho hospitals. And I always sometimes refer to hospitals as hotels. I get caught up in the <laughs> fact that, you know, it, it, at the end of the day, they're still a client and, and you still have to get them food. So Absolutely. they just happen to be sick. They're there for another reason. Yeah. I'd say gaming, gaming, hospitality, resort 
hospitality um, and healthcare hospitality are the three major that we do. We do a lot okay. of big resort work, um, destination resort work all over. Okay. Um, got out of the school work. Uh, we did a lot of that, you know, through the years, yeah. but uh, we've kind of focused on those three. Great. And I and I love doing mom and pops for the guys that are entrepreneurs that want to start their own business. You know, not the name chefs, not the celebrity yeah. chefs, but the the Joe Schmo that yeah. has an idea. And you know, I'll, I'll do those all day long for a nickel and a dime just to keep yeah. them. You know, to to make them succeed because I think it's important. Yeah, and and I imagine those are kind of fun too because it doesn't take a lot of thought from what all the experience that you've got it, it it's you're talking about usually a small kitchen i would imagine so the mom and pop ones that you create yeah. are yeah, they're the, they're the fun ones because you're you're helping an operator who wants, you know, somebody who wants to create something, you're helping them create that and yeah. uh, and you're helping hopefully giving them an opportunity to succeed because yeah. of this project is is the amount that goes into creating the project. And right. if you can bring them the expertise and the ability to help guide them, not only in design, but in just general consulting and business yeah. and, and all the things that go with it, um, that's where the real um, – good feeling of success and, and feeling good about what you do comes in. Yeah. Cause you get to see it too, right? Like you get to be a part of that yep. person's life versus the resorts where you're just a cog in the wheel. Whereas the, the, the one you're working with, you get to be a part of, not like you said, you're not just designing a piece of uh, property. You're designing that person's livelihood essentially. And, and, yeah. and, and, and being a consultant on it, a true consultant. Yeah, and it, and it's important. I mean, I I still remember the first job that I did, and 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 the mistakes I made, and and jobs that I've worked on ten, twelve, fifteen, twenty years ago come back, and you work on them again. Um, yeah. I can't tell you how many times I think I did the the buffet in Caesars in Atlantic City over three times in in fifteen years. I yeah. mean, it's just it's just it's constantly evolving, and yeah. in a way, they're kind of like children. They just they're all they're all every design you ever did is part of your life. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and it makes you, it gives you the, the ability to create, you know, and you draw from all those things as well. Yeah. Is there a project that sticks out in your mind as maybe one of the, maybe the, either the coolest or the one that you're the most proud of over your career so far? I think that there's, there's projects on both sides of the fence. There's the ones that you had this great idea and this great design <laughs> and it, like you said, well, out um and then there's the ones that that really were an iconic i think design that you really like like i i think my favorite there are two restaurants that i did that i thought were my favorite designs as far as the creativity one was the um hard rock work that we did at, for new york new york the steakhouse okay. um and the first one we ever did for them which was the original uh that uh, created this sort of amphitheater of seating around this open kitchen with glass walls, which to this day, and it's the one that's in Tampa, um, was just great. And then we've done a couple more for them. We the one at uh, Coconut Creek and then one up in New York City. That to me is an iconic design. It's just a classy yeah. looking kitchen. Um, and then I did one that didn't stay open long, uh, Bragazio, which was in uh, the Pompano Park or the Pompano Casino. Um, in Fort Lauderdale area. And, uh, that was just a really, really cool kitchen, but, uh, just it didn't have the business. So it, it, it closed, but it was just yeah. a great design. And, and I still work with the chef, but there's been so many of them. I mean, I did a, I did a chocolate waterfall for, for white chocolate and dark chocolate that was five feet high and oh. two feet wide. And we had to figure oh. out, and it was here in three levels and we had to figure out how to make it work but it it took so much chocolate to fill it every morning and then they had to break it down every night that they used it for about a week and then they said this doesn't work <laughs> best laid plans right? but it was gorgeous yeah, yeah. exactly what but, is one yeah, I mean, creating those things is fun what's one thing about john egner that nobody would ever guess when they meet you uh yeah well i mean i, I want to be i want to be able to learn how to play the saxophone someday i'm working okay. on that okay <laughs> But uh, no, I, I don't, I, I, you know, what I am is what I wear on my sleeve. I don't, yeah. uh, I pretty much, as you know, I pretty much say yeah. what I feel most of the I, time. <laughs> I, 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 that's what I love about you though. It's uh, I agree with you. You're kind of an open book and, and uh, you, you know where you stand with John when you talk to him and, and, you know, I, I appreciate that because as somebody that runs an association, I look at, I want honest opinions. I don't want somebody to tell me what I want to hear. I want to know what we need to do better. So when I've got somebody that's willing to say that, that's, that's how you become better. And I might not be able to fix everything yep, that I can do, but at least I can try. So. 
Yeah. Um, well, you mentioned earlier about screw ups and we in the in the the chocolate tower. What's been maybe your and and you know as well as I do, I love to bring these sessions out at conferences once in a while and everything. But what's been your biggest screw up that you've done, and what did you learn from it? The biggest, I won't say screw up as much as just a, 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 an uneducated design aspect is understanding the relationship between granite and, and coefficients of dimension and how heat affects different things and how it transmits through the, the and then what the materials can and can't do. Okay. Um, I spent a lot of time fixing problems with, <laughs> you know, cracking of buffets and things like that, that, uh, I, I really did actually uh, wrote a white paper on it um, with regard to the, you know, granite and, and granite doesn't really expand to crack. What cracks granite is the, uh, the stress points that happen from the constructability of the substructure. And, okay. and over time, heat allows it to crack, but it's what causes it is just the way it was installed. It wasn't leveled properly or there was a stress that, that would, that grows in the stone, just like, for example, an earthquake, you know, yeah. they don't happen right away. They happen over time yeah. because stress builds up and builds up. It's kind of the same with stone. Okay. Um, so uh, I learned to really pay attention to the design now with that respect. So what's one piece of advice you'd give to anyone thinking of becoming a food service consultant? Always keep your eyes open and always be learning and always listen to your client. I mean, your client knows what they want. Sometimes they don't know how to say it um, or articulate it properly, but your experience is what you need to draw from to help understand their need. You know, you have, it's like translating. You have to be able to translate their language into their vision, which yeah. sometimes doesn't match, but you, you can create that by doing, by listening. Yeah. Well put, well put. Um, what is the best practical joke anyone's ever played on you? <laughs> I can't sure say you to tell me that one, didn't he? <laughs> Wade, we're not going there. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> he did, as a matter of fact, tell me I had to ask that. So, you know, last year, last season, we, we talked to Ken. Um, and in that, I, I mentioned in the, out, in the intro as well today, how did the fruit ball come to be from you two? It's just, if people aren't familiar, and I think I explained it before when we talked to Ken, but every year at the NAFM show, you've gotten together where we basically play baseball with fruit of different varieties, and it's it's crazy, it's fun, but it's certainly off the wall uh, thinking. So how did that come about between you two? So I think uh, at uh, NAFM in uh Dallas, um, a buddy of mine, and I was on the East Coast, and, and the rep group uh, Moshe Enterprise or Moshe was the rep that called on me for a lot of the lines that we specified, and uh, they had been they were staying in the Omni, and um, one of the guys on their group, a guy named Rick Long, uh, got stuck in an elevator, and uh, they sent him to his room. He was in there for four hours. They sent him a big, big fruit basket. Uh, they also repped um, uh, Dorman and Siegel at the time was the president, and Evan was a big baseball fan. So they were the leading rep group, sales group that year. So Evan gave everybody a baseball bat with their engraved initials on it and everything. So it was about four, about two in the morning, two thirty in the morning. We all came back, and and uh, they were in that room, and we all wound up in a room, and we were just, you know, just shooting the breeze, kind of catching up, talking about stuff. And, and, uh, Bobby Moshe, who was a good friend of mine, uh, was on the other side of the room and, and, uh, he had the baseball bat, um, and he was just kind of playing with it and everything. And, and next to me was the, the fruit basket. So I picked up a grape and threw it at him and he tried to swing and missed it. Of course, the grape, you know, it's kind of tough to yeah, hit. Exactly. And he yelled out, give me something bigger. So I took an orange and threw it to him and he orange. And we basically put the whole, basket of fruit in that hotel room that night <laughs> and that was the beginning of fruit ball <laughs> well i'm glad to see it's moved been, been moved outside now too to, yeah so we had to take it outside <laughs> to your credit though i i have to say that if you didn't know that or see us playing fruit ball because i've been lucky enough to participate in a few of these now you would not know actually the next day that we've played fruit ball in the middle of the night in anywhere we've played because one of the things that you and Ken have been very adamant about is we leave the place clean when we're done as clean as we can anyway. Absolutely. Yeah. So that way we don't yeah. make a big mess for other people to clean up. 
We've played in some. We've played in parking lots. Uh, we've played in parking garages. We played on the beach, obviously, at the Swan and yeah. Dolphin two years. That was when it, the first real game was at the Swan and Dolphin on the beach. Um, I think that was in two thousand or two thousand one. Um, just before 9-11. And, uh, you know, so we played pretty much everywhere. We tried to play in Barcelona, but we couldn't find a baseball bat. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's – and a Bulls uh, – what do they call it? The Matadors thing doesn't quite work the same, obviously. Like, yeah, yeah no, it doesn't. What are three things your friends or family would say to describe you? <laughs> I know, generous, um, caring, creative. When you're getting ready to travel to a client, either uh, on site or to a meeting, what are the three must have things you have to take with you? My trusty notebook, 20 for 30 year notebook, two a year. I've got them all. Nice. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, an open mind and, uh, and a willingness to cr- spend whatever time it takes. Ooh, They're not things one. you pack, they're the things that they bring you with you. Absolutely. You know, along the time, you know, as a, as a designer and, and just a general food service consultant, there are times when you hit those mental blocks, whether it's a writing block or a design block or whatever it may be. What's a tip or trick that you use in order to overcome that mental block at the time? Uh, you know, normally, I, like I said, I just it, it kind of just sits in my mind and percolates. And then when it's ready to come out, it just flows out of me somehow. Um, uh, I think I'm always designing in the back of my mind somewhere. Um, and, but when I get stuck in the middle of a design, when I'm actually putting it out there, I always stop and go back to the, the back door and the front door and I work my way in. So the customer okay. side coming in and the service side coming in and I work my way to the middle. Um, and I usually find the answer. Nice. I like process. that. Yeah, absolutely. So you've always got the Keebler elves working in the back of your mind, designing for oh, you they're, they're, until they're, they're ready to come out. <laughs> yeah. There's people in there. I don't even know. <laughs> they make me good. Well, that's all the formal questions I've got for you today, John. But before I let you go, uh, I do want to have a little bit of fun with you and peek behind those layers of onions. It's John Egnor. So I've got a speed round here. So I'll just go through some of these questions, see where you fall into this. Um, what's your favorite breakfast cereal? Uh, my favorite breakfast cereal is Quaker Oats and okay. Apple. Always been Quaker Oats and oatmeal, or is that did you have something different as a kid? Uh, you know, I could go for a messel, which is a okay. kind of a potato yeah. and egg and bacon sandwich. Yeah. Okay. Uh, fancy restaurant or local dive? Local dive. What's a vice that you just can't part with? Red wine. Uh, any certain brand or vineyard or anything? No, just red wine. No, <laughs> just red wine. All right. Puppies or kittens? Uh, both. Do you sing in the shower? Yes or no? Uh, no. I sing everywhere else, but <laughs> not <no>. in shower. <laughs> Live on a moon base or on a Mars base? Uh, Mars base. If you were given $1,000 to spend on your closest friend, what would you give them? Probably more than $1,000. <laughs> uh, are you more spontaneous or a planner? Spontaneous. If you were put in charge of an office vending machine, what are the top three things you'd have to have in the vending machine? Planners, peanuts. M&M's and Snickers. All three sound great. Um, morning person <laughs> or a night owl? Uh, both. I believe that. Soft tacos or crunchy tacos? Crunchy. Uh, what's your guilty pleasure snack? Potato chips. Particular type or flavor? Cape Cod, kettle fried. Coke or Pepsi? Pepsi. Uh, cookies or brownies? Brownies. Any particular type of brownie or... Regular old more brownie. Chatter. <laughs> All right. More chocolate, the better. Are you a day planner kind of guy or a digital calendar kind of guy? Uh, digital calendar. Calendar. Okay. Digital. Yep. And if humans came with a warning label, what would your warning label say? <laughs> Don't listen to them. <laughs> <laughs> well, John, that's it for All me. Right. Tell, tell people. <laughs> Tell, uh, tell everybody on, in the audience how to get a hold of you if they want more information. Uh, you can reach me on uh, my cell phone, uh, 609-335-3695, or uh, on the website, uh, john at uh, jmehospitality.com. Well, that wraps up this edition of On Tap, presented by FCSI of the Americas. A huge thank you to John today for joining us. We can't do this show without members like you, and we really appreciate your time. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure to subscribe to the show wherever you find your favorite podcasts and make sure to turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any future episodes. But until then, 
Cheers. <laughs>